If you're anything like me, you love to travel and you love to take photos of your travels. And one very important aspect of that is remembering where those pictures were taken. A lot of modern cameras have GPS's in them nowadays, especially our phones and low-end consumer cameras. But for some reason, high-end professional cameras, majority of them still don't have GPS in. And that is super frustrating for me because I love to see my pictures on the world map. So in this video, I'll teach you how to add GPS locations to all your pictures with pinpoint accuracy with just a few steps. And this is something I've been doing for the past few years to my pictures and it took me a while to figure out a good workflow for it. So I think a lot of you are gonna benefit from it. I wanted to make this video a long time ago, but because of what's happening right now in the world, I haven't been out much. So luckily restrictions lifted a few weeks ago here in the UK and I've been vaccinated, which is awesome. So Chris and I jumped on the train and went to Margate. It's a coastal town in the southeast of England and it was a perfect opportunity for me to brush on my photography skills because I haven't touched the camera really for the past year and to show you how to add geolocation to all of my pictures. So it's not magic. I use an app on my phone which is called Geotag Photos 2. You just press a button at the beginning of the trip, it tracks the entire trip, and then at the end you press that button again. It uploads it to whatever cloud service you want. I use Dropbox, and then I just load that file into Lightroom Classic, and it just shows you your entire trip. And then with a couple of clicks, you can automatically add all the pictures that you took on that track that uh, Geotag Photos has created. So there's a couple of caveats, of course, for this process. The biggest thing is to remember to turn it on when you start your trip. This is something that uh, I still struggle with, but even if you remember halfway through the trip, you can just uh, do it then and then at least you have a good basis of where the first half of your photos need to go. The second caveat is if you're changing time zones, you need to remember to adjust your camera's time and date. So that is also something that I forget often, but thankfully there's a good feature in Lightroom Classic where you can just offset the hours difference and it will know to offset for every picture when you run the process. So the app is free to use for up to three trips and then you have to buy the full version, which is uh, I think $12.99. And trust me, it's totally worth it. Much cheaper than buying a GPS unit for your camera and attaching it on top. Another trick that you can do if you wanna keep using it for free is just uh, rather than creating new trips all the time, just rename the previous one and take the dates out of that that you want because you can select specific dates as well. Yeah, so let's jump into the app and I'll show you how it works. So when you launch the app, the first thing you'll see is that it tells you what to set your camera time as. So if you're traveling somewhere with a different time zone, this will change and it will tell you to change your camera as well, which is very handy. Then you just click on the plus sign at the top, you name the trip that you are on, and then just click start, and that's pretty much it. It will track you until you press stop, and it will separate every day in the file that comes into Lightroom, so it's easier for you to select specific days if you want. Now something awesome that I found is that it doesn't actually use that much battery on your phone, so you can just keep it running throughout, even if it's a 10 day trip, just keep it running until the end. And it saves you the hustle from trying to remember to turn it on and off every day. Now within the app, you can also see the, the trip so far. You can just press the trip details and then show all trip parts. And it will show you on the map what you've done so far. And you can also see previous trips. So you can go back to your history. And you can see all the other holidays you've taken and you know see how much you walked or how much you drove. It's pretty cool. So as soon as you've pressed stop, if you've set it up correctly with your cloud services, it should automatically upload the file there. You can see here, I've set mine to go to my iCloud drive and my Dropbox just to have redundancy. But you can also use um, their own service and also Google Drive, if that is something that you're into. I've set my app logging interval every 30 seconds because I feel that that's enough. Like if you've moved how much can you really move in 30 seconds? But you can also set it continuously to just keep setting on and on every minute, every two minutes, up to every hour. If you're very slow or I don't know, I don't know your circumstances, but it's good that you have all those options. Um, I feel that 30 seconds is enough and it doesn't drain my battery, like I've said. Of course, you can set your units to be metric or imperial for you silly Americans. And you can also set notifications to let you know if it's lost GPS signal or if your time zone changes through the trip so you can change 
the camera again. So if you're crossing a border. So yeah, that's how the app works. Now let's jump onto my Mac and show you how to basically use that information in Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom in my folder with all the photos from Margate. All you gotta do is select them all. So Command A or Control A on a PC and go to your map. And now if you open the film strip, just so you can have a better idea on what's going on, you can see this little icon here. It looks like a no idea what that is <laughs> but that's what you need to load your track log so you can see here load track log all you have to do is um, go to where your geotag photos track log is saved you can see here i have quite a few from previous trips but this is the one we want now margate and let's choose that and it should load a track there you go so it was a one-day trip so you won't you we're not going to see anything other than 29th of may as you can see i forgot to turn it off until i was halfway back on the train but if you had more days on the trip you could select them from here or you can just choose to have all of them appear and you can see i already have 18 pictures here geotagged and that's from my drone so the drone has gps which is great so yeah you have all the pictures selected and you can just do auto tag now if there is a problem with the timing and you want a time offset you just click on the set time zone offset and then you can just adjust these figures so that the track log matches with the pictures and yeah, that's how you do that. I don't have an example to show you right now, but I'm sure you can figure it out. So yeah, all we gotta do is auto tag. And you can see up here, process. It's, uh, it's fairly fast and that's done. So if we zoom in closer to what we, the trip we did, you can see Chris and I walked all along the beach and just took pictures. And now they are all geotagged. And the closer you get, the more accurate it gets, of course. So you can see it's quite good. It's very accurate. Um, so yeah, now when you export your pictures, if you make sure you have the geolocation selected so that for privacy reasons, sometimes it hasn't turned off, so it, switch, it, it just deletes them. So make sure that's on. So when you put them into Instagram, you have your location straight away, just as it should be. So that's the entire process of how I geotag all my pictures with pinpoint accuracy. I hope you have learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos in the future. I promise I'll be making more videos now that life is starting to get back to normal. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.